Ladies and gentlemen, welcome out to the Season 3 Breject Battle Royale Draft Analysis here for the Detroit Steel Wings. My name is Seabad, coach of said Detroit Steel Wings, and I'm excited and honored and elated and just overall pumped to be here with another season of another Draft League. Um, if you guys are uh, relatively new or this is your first Draft League experience that you're like, you know what, let's catch up from the beginning. A little bit of a recap. We did have an incredible, incredible season last season with the Breject Battle Royale. Uh, we ended up going, I don't even remember. I don't remember. Can I still look it up? Can I still look it up? I'm going to see if I can look it up. I'm going to look it up right now. What is my overall lifetime history? We had, a, we had a fantastic season. We had a fantastic season last season. We ended up going to the quarterfinals. Uh, we ended up eight and five. So in the regular season, we were eight and four. Um, ended up taking a loss in the playoffs uh, first round. But hey, we had a great, great time. We had a great time and it was a ton of fun. And I'm looking forward to... Just kind of bringing it back and running it back and uh, taking it all the way to the top this season. So if you guys are excited, show some love on that like button down below. It goes a long way in supporting the channel. And if you're new, subscribe. I literally can see statistics on my YouTube dashboard that shows me a percentage of people who watch so much of the video are not subscribed. And you'll more than likely come back to watch another video when you want to see the Wi-Fi battle. Just go on ahead and subscribe. It helps me out and make sure you guys get notified of your uploads. It's just a win-win overall. And it helps me towards my goal of 35,000 subscribers. So please and thank you in advance. Um, we're going to be breaking down our team. I'm going to talk about a little bit of the, the, the bare bones of it and uh, what exactly goes into the draft league before we get into it. Um, and if I recall, and if it is super necessary, I may or may not have timestamps in the description talking about each 11 of my picks. Um, I don't know if that will be there, but if it is there, then I found it necessary to talk about. So um, within this draft league, we expanded. Last season, we had we had 16 coaches. And now we have 20 coaches. And last season, we only picked 10 Pokemon, but now we pick 11. So now there's more coaches, more Pokemon to pick from with the Crown Tundra DLC. So we've got more Pokemon on our team. And we actually decreased the point cap by about 100 points. So as opposed to 1,200 points last season, it is now 1,100 points. What that means is there is an internal tiering method in which we all decided how much the Pokemon was worth. And we need to use all 1,100 of our points to draft 11 Pokemon that can take on where we build six Pokemon that can take any combination of our opponent's 11 Pokemon on each week. So in face value, you're like, just draft 1,100 point Pokemon. But the heavier hitting Pokemon are worth more and the not so, you know, wonderful Pokemon are weighted towards the bottom. They range from 200 points down to 20 points and you balance those out. So it goes in a snake style draft. One all the way down to coach 20. Coach 20 goes again and it goes all the way back to one circles back and down for 11 rounds so with that being said um we've got i believe let me take a look here where in the draft were we let me see we were 14 of 20 so never do we get a favorable draft spot ever ever that's fine though that's fine um so we want to make sure that we are grabbing pokemon that there's always a trend that seems to happen in drafts where once one coach picks up a certain type or a certain niche pokemon um, like a like a strong dragon, then you'll start to see other dragons go. But round one, you really want to just kind of grab the hardest hitting, you know, SOB that's on the board. Um, and within that first round, you know, we saw a lot of the big threats go that were available within this. Um, we saw Landorus Therian go first overall. We saw Tornadus Therian go second. Uh, Dragapult, Urshifu Single Strike, Tapu Koko, uh, Galarian Darmanitan, Galarian Zapdos, Spectrier, Mew, Garchomp. Um, we saw Lolan Executor, but that's that's a whole different story. Um, we saw Zapdos. I mean, we saw Melmetal. You grab the hardest hitting SOB that's on the board that you think is going to be best. And there's a Pokemon that I wanted to draft actually uh, in another league. And then I think in the season before this in BBR, I wanted to draft this Pokemon and it just didn't fall to me. And this time around, it fell to me. And I was like, all right, you know what? I want to use it. It looks like a lot of fun. I think it could be good. So the first Pokemon that we ended up drafting this in this season of the first round pick overall in the BBR for the Detroit Steel Wings, we grab Rillaboom. Uh, Rillaboom's a monster. Rillaboom is a monster. It's got 100 base HP, 125 attack, 90 defense, 60 special attack, 70 special defense, and 85 base speed. Um, it does have the natural grass starter default ability of Overgrow, but it also does have the hidden ability Grassy Surge, which sets the grassy terrain to boost its grass moves and also making its move Grassy Glide now a priority move. Um, I don't really think there's anything too crazy to say about that. Uh, it hits like a truck. It sets up its own rain to boost its own stab moves. It has access to U-turn, knockoff, drain punch, darkest lariat, high horsepower, leech seed, bulk up, sword dance. I mean, it's a really great Pokemon that just hits so, 
so, so, so hard. And it provides a lot of a building structure for the rest of the team. It provides natural recovery for a lot of the team, which is fantastic because you sometimes see a lot of these Pokemon get drafted that don't have any sort of natural recovery. And being able to set a grassy terrain for some of those Pokemon can help out. And it also, what it also does on top of that grassy terrain, healing the Pokemon, it also reduces the damage of the move Earthquake. So if any Pokemon go for Earthquake in grassy terrain, it is actually reduced. So you can kind of maybe get some Pokemon that might typically be a little ground weak and that kind of helps them sponge it. Of course, there's moves like High Horsepower, Drill Run, Stomping Tantrum, Earth Power, Scorching Sands, you name it, that, uh, you know, are unaffected by the train. But the hardest hitting ground move in the game, Earthquake, is nerfed. So that does give us a little bit more of some building blocks. Um, Rillaboom typically has a hard time dealing with, uh, in my opinion, um, we see a lot of flying types. It doesn't get a lot of uh, coverage that can hit bulky flying types. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it can use, it, 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 it can break a lot of things, but it's not a one-man wrecking ball. It does need a Pokemon to kind of help out and to kind of go with the flow. And as we went around from round two, uh, round two came back to us. You know, we saw Victini go. We saw Terrakion. We saw Heatran. I really wanted Bulu, or I wanted Bulu Tran. I wanted Rillaboom Heatran so bad, so bad. And it went, it went. I was so mad. But I, because I just wanted, I just wanted, I just wanted Rillaboom and Heatran. I thought that would have been really sick, um, especially with some of the moves that Heatran gets access to now outside of events. So, um, and then Pokemon like Corviknight went and Togekiss. And so it was like, ah, oh, man, you know, what do we, what do we help Rillaboom go with? And like I said, Rillaboom kind of needs a partner in crime to help go with the flow. And as, as the, as the wheel, as the, as the turning of the gears came back to us, uh, there was one Pokemon that really, really went with the flow above everything else. And that is actually suspenseful we'll pause rapid strike or Shifu. Um, I, for those of you guys who did not watch last season, uh, two of my most no notable losses, I will say were against a team that had, uh, Urshifu rapid strike. And I don't want to say that really influenced this pick, but it kind of did. Um, Urshifu rapid strike, has the signature move Surging Strikes. It is a three hit move that each move is a critical hit. Uh, it has 100 base HP, 130 attack, 100 defense, 63 special attack, 60 special defense, 97 base speed. Unseen Fist means that you can't click Protect in front of it, which is even better. Um, so uh, this this Pokemon, Urshifu, it goes with the flow. It, it flows and hits with the Surging Strikes. Um, it's got priority in Aqua Jet. It can set up with Bulk Up. It can close combat. It can U-turn. It just, it's another Pokemon that it gets a little bit extra coverage. And really, if you are, if you have a Pokemon that can resist a hit from a Rillaboom, what are the odds that afterwards it also takes a hit from Urshifu Rapid Strike? So these two Pokemon kind of going hand in hand together right now. Uh, Rillaboom's terrain helps out Urshifu Rapid Strike because we can keep that right. We can keep recovery going its way if need be. Um, we can, it, it, it really, I just, I love it. I love it. These two hit so uh, it's 125 attack on Rillaboom, 130 on Urshifu Rapid Strike. I don't, I, I think if you've been around for the the uh, the Ar Isle of Armor DLC and watched any League battles, showdowns, Wi-Fi battles, anything like that, you're already aware of what Urshifu Rapid Strike can do. And I'm very excited to be able to use that. Uh, pairing it off, we're, we're coming around. And uh, so it goes all the way back. And then it comes all the way back around. And now we're on to round three. And we've used 360 of our points on two Pokemon so far. And it's like, all right. We need, we need to do something. Uh, we need a little bit more bulk. Uh, maybe something like like Urshifu and Rillaboom both don't really have good special attacks. So it can maybe a little bit, be a little bulkier and less offensive to kind of take those hits. But we need a Pokemon that can be kind of a, a little versatile. A little versatile, if you will. So uh, there were a few options that we were toying around with. And the next Pokemon that we ended up grabbing, uh, fan favorite. When I say fan favorite, I'm the fan. Uh, fan favorite, Arcanine. Arcanine, for those of you guys who don't know, was my favorite Pokemon of all time for the longest running. It is still top five. Um, it is now number three behind Toxtricity and Suicune in that order. Uh, Toxtricity being number one, Suicune being number two, Arcanine being number three. Um, Arcanine is a great Pokemon. It is pure fire typing. It loves the grassy terrain recovery. It has the Intimidate ability to drop the physical attacks out of my opponent by one stage. It has the Flash Fire ability, giving it an immunity to fire type moves. It has 110 base attack, so we have another Pokemon with above base 100 attack. It has 100 base special attack, 
And it's got 90 HP, 80 defense, and 80 special defense. So, like, you can run that defensive or special defensive based on depending, depending on what you need to check. And then it has base 95 speed, so it's fast, too. It's got priority and extreme speed. It's got, it can be physical with, like, flare blitz. It can be special with, like, flamethrower and scorching sands. I mean, I, it's, it's great. It's great. It's very bulky. It can recover. It's got built-in recovery with morning sun as well. So on top of the grassy terrain, it can go for morning sun and be able to take that. It is weak to earthquake, so grassy terrain will help out with that, of course. Um, but, you know, very, 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 very big fan of Arcanine. Um, and with these Pokemon, you know, we got to kind of start realizing that, okay, we've got a really solid fire water grass core down right now. We need to assemble some sort of some bulk now because a lot of these Pokemon were like, yeah, like they're, they're pretty, they're pretty thick. Like they can take a hit, but we need a Pokemon that's going to be able to legitimately like I'm bringing this to take a hit. What do we bring to take a hit? So next Pokemon, uh, this does allow us some hits to be taken to took and took Uh, this also does allow us to, uh, provide some hazards. And it's another Pokemon that appreciates the grassy terrain that Rillaboom has. Next up, we have Steelix, 80 points. It is a steel and ground type Pokemon. Um, we are now four picks in with uh, almost or over half of our budget gone, but that's okay. We're gonna kind of balance it out. That's what we do. You grab some heavy hitters up top and you bring it down as, as, the, as the draft comes around, you, you supplement with some lower tier picks. But Steelix is 80 points. So we've went 180, 180, 140, and now 80 points for Steelix. Steelix has a base 200 defense. I don't think you ever need to put any single EV into Steelix's defense because it's still going to be higher than whatever defense Pokemon you want to run. Um, it has Rockhead, it has Sturdy, it has Sheer Force, it can set up Stealth Rocks. It got a bunch of cool new moves in Sword and Shield and with the uh, with the move tutors in the Isle of Armor. So I don't think there's too much. I'm not going to go too in-depth in a lot of these Pokemon what they have access to to prevent my opponents from getting any sort of additional information ahead of time by watching my draft analysis. But... Um, it has a ton of viability, in my opinion. It is, again, another Pokemon that appreciates that grassy terrain recovery. It does not get any sort of built-in recovery. Like, Urshifu can get Drain Punch, Arcanine can get Morning Sun, Steelix has nothing. Steelix has leftovers and rest, and that's it. So, it is another Pokemon that appreciates that grassy terrain recovery. Uh, being able to set up rocks is a huge thing. We also have another Fairy Resist on the team. We have an Electric Immunity. We have a Poison Immunity on the team. Um, all in all, Steelix, fantastic, fantastic Pokemon. Now... We need a little bit more bulk on the special side. Um, outside of grassy terrain, we're starting to develop a little bit of a ground immunity. Um, a psychic immunity would be really, really nice right about now. And for those of you guys who watched our last season of the Brejex Battle Royale, I just need to say that Parkway is making her way back. Mandibuzz, 160 points, the dark and flying type. She is very bulky, 110 HP, 105 defense, 95 special defense with uh, access to defog built-in recovery through roost knockoff taunt tailwind uh incredible incredible pokemon i think after using it last season mandibuzz climbed its way to the top of the pokemon of i will always consider drafting this pokemon i think mandibuzz does great sponging psychic hits sponging special hits we can pair it nicely with steelix to kind of check each other's balances there we've got a good firewater grass core to alternate alternate around those offensive and defensive holes that we have within just that defensive core alone being able to pivot out and u-turn being able to knock off toxic taunt Overcoat means we're, uh, we're we're immune to any sort of weather or spore damages, so it's fantastic. I love Mandibuzz. I think it's a great pick. I think the ground immunity helps us out as well as we're starting to develop that ground weakness. And and as we is the draft comes back around now, we have 360 points left for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, six picks. We have 360 points left for six picks. So we gotta kind of figure out where these points are gonna come from. Um, fast electric types are really good in draft format, in my humble opinion. And I wanted a Pokemon that not only was a fast electric type, I've, I've drafted a few fast electrics recently that they really don't act as anything else other than a fast electric. And I know that sounds weird, but like Arcanine can be a bulky offensive fire type or it can be a defensive intimidator with Will-O-Wisp. A fast electric type, like like I'm going to say like Manectric is very fast and it goes electric move, random coverage move, random coverage move. I want to electric type Pokemon that could potentially do more than that. So the next Pokemon that we ended up gra grabbing after Mandibuzz is going to be a Lolan Raichu with 100 points. Lolan Raichu has the Surge Surfer ability. A Lolan Raichu is very fast with 110 base speed, also a base 85 attack, base 95 special attack. A Lolan Raichu has a lot of opportunities to be a great utility Pokemon on top of being a very offensively special Pokemon, um, a very specially offensive Pokemon, offensively special, specially offensive Pokemon. Um, being able to set up a nasty plot, having a lot of opportunities for coverage moves, being able to have priority and fake out and extreme speed, being a wish passer, being able to set up screens. It's got some good utility, and I think using Raichu to our advantage is going to be 
Uh, a great, great opportunity for our team. I'm um, having that fast Pokemon. I really wanted to grab something that could set electric terrain for it, but unfortunately, earlier this round, Pinkerton actually went. And I typed in the chat as we were drafting. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm going to grab this Pokemon. Like, I planned on it. You just happened to draft Pinkerton before me. So uh, we grabbed a little Raichu. Very excited about that. Um, with this team, we have one dragon resist. We have one dragon resist. And we get kind of smacked around by dragons otherwise with the proper coverage move. So we need a fairy and good fairies are going. Good fairies are going gone. I have 260 points left for five Pokemon and we need a good fairy. For the love of God, we need a good fairy. So we grab Alchemy. Alchemy is a pure fairy type Pokemon. Special defense through the roof. I don't think I knew this before grabbing Alchemy. Alchemy's special defense is 121. What on God's green? That is insane. That is some thickness. Alchemy uh, has uh, Alchemy is another Pokemon that appreciates the grassy terrain recovery. I didn't talk about this. Alone Raichu also appreciates the grassy terrain recovery. Alchemy really appreciates it because we don't get any sort of natural built in recovery other than leftovers. Um, draining Kiss, I think maybe um, it has good coverage moves that you'd expect from a bulky fairy type. It can set up with Calm Mind. It can turn around and dish out some hits with a base 110 special attack and it takes dragon hits and it eats them up because you know, you, you, you need you need dragon type Pokemon. So you need a dragon immunity. You don't need a dragon type Pokemon. Spoilers. I didn't draft a dragon type Pokemon, but I we needed a dragon type resist. We needed a dragon immunity on the team. Now, come back around 160 points for four picks. If you're doing the math, that is about 40 points on average per pick. That doesn't leave us with much. We still need a lot. We still need some speed. We still need some special. We only have two Pokemon that have 100 base special attack or higher. We need some special threats. We need some speed. We need some bulk still, in my opinion. So next Pokemon that we needed. Um, so we have our fairy type. Uh, we could use a little bit more hazards. Our only hazard setter right now is Steelix. So all we have are rocks. Ideally, something that can provide spikes, something that could potentially provide toxic spikes, something that can do a little bit more utility for us. And we're going to grab Weezing. This is regular Weezing. This is not the Glarian Weezing. And Glarian Weezing getting defog and regular Weezing not kind of doesn't feel right to me, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, regular Weezing is a pure poison type Pokemon. It has uh, levitate and now has the neutralizing gas ability. So it can provide as a ground immunity or it can act as a grounded poison type now to absorb any sort of toxic spikes and neutralizing gas will um, will nullify the opponent's ability, which is fantastic. It is a bulky poison type with 120 defense and base 70 special defense. It's got some really interesting coverage opportunity with uh, with sludge bomb, flamethrower, um, it can set up Toxic, it can Toxic Spikes, it can Will-O-Wisp, things like that. It can Pain Split, it can Memento. It, it, it's a very interesting pick and it's a very bulky Pokemon. I haven't drafted Weezing in quite some time, um, but I think now having now that it has the ability to not be a Grounded Poison type and it can absorb Toxic Spikes, as well as provide a little bit more benefit as a Fairy Resist as well, um, can, can be very, very good for our team. Uh, also acts as a Fighting Resist. So I really liked Weezing. I, I think it acts as a very bulky Pokemon. I think it provides us just a little bit more hazards on the team. And um, now that we've got a lot of bulk solidified, it's time to kind of look into some speed, um, some potential wish support, and uh, some special offense. And one Pokemon that actually provides really great speed and really great special offense out of the 40 point tier is Kadabra. Now, the, here's the thing. I, there were a lot of coaches that were not a fan of the budget restriction in this, be going down to 1100 points and having the retiers. I'm a big fan of that because I don't think I would have ever drafted Kadabra for 40 points. And I want to say something about Kadabra. Kadabra, let me just pull this up here. Let me just pull this up here. I'm going to open up Pokemon Showdown. And I'm going to compare these two side by side for you live right now. In case you've never looked at this. So, first Pokemon, Kadabra. We're going to pull that up. And the next Pokemon, Alakazam. Alakazam, 160 point Pokemon in draft league format. It has uh, 135 base special attack and 120 base speed. You're like, wow, that hits really, that's really fast and that hits really hard. For 120 points less at 40 points, you can get Kadabra, 120 base special attack and 105 speed. That still outspeeds quite a lot. That still hits really, really hard. And you still get magic guards. So like, what, what, where are we, where are we, where are we not connecting the dots here? I don't know. I don't, like I said, I don't think I would have ever drafted Kadabra, but Kadabra hit, Kadabra now has the highest special attack on our team for 40 points. It is the second fastest Pokemon on our team at 40 points. And it, it's, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. I look forward to bringing Kadabra in draft leagues. I'm, I, you know, a lot of the people are going to be bringing their first five picks and then one random pick. 
I look forward to bringing Kadabra multiple weeks. It hits like an absolute truck. Life Orb, Magic Guard, Kadabra with 120 special attack. I don't know what to tell you. I think it's great Pokemon. Got a pretty much almost the same coverage as Alakazam as well. Great, great pick. Uh, we have 60 points left for two more Pokemon. So we can get two 20 point Pokemon and save 20 for leftover just in case we feel like spicing up with a free agent. Or we can get a 20 point and a 40 point Pokemon. And a lot of coaches at this point are starting to grab their 20 point picks early because out of there, you really don't get too many Pokemon that provide good, um, <laughs> good, that aren't, that are, that are, that aren't too good in my opinion. But in, within the 20 point tier, there are some Pokemon that can provide some benefit. And the Pokemon that we grab from the 20 point tier, Lickitung. Lickitung. Really, Chase? Really? Let me just hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Uh, Lickitung is, has the oblivious ability. It cannot be taunted. It can provide really nice wish support off its base 90 HP. It acts as a great bulky normal type Pokemon having access to Eviolite, boosting its 75 defense and special defense by 1.5 times. Let me just go through some of the moves that Lickitung gets here. Let me just go through some of those moves. It's access to Aqua Tail. It's access to Body Press, Body Slam, Brick Break, Counter, Curse, Disable, Dra Double Edge, Dragon Tail, Earthquake, Facade, Fire Blast, Fire Punch, Flamethrower, Focus Punch, Hammer Arm. It can access as a Heal Bell user. It can provide knockoff support. It can set up with Power Up Punch. It can Rest. It can Rock Slide, Seismic Toss, Shadow Ball, Sleep Talk. It can Substitute. It can Surf. It can set up with Swords Dance. It can Thunder, Thunderbolt, Thunder Punch, Toxic, Wish, Zen Headbutt, Belly Drum. I don't know if I'll ever run Belly Drum. I don't know if I'll ever do that. I'm just saying. There's a lot of opportunities for Lickitung to provide that wish support to our other team, to the rest of our team, but also act as a pivotal member of the Detroit Steelings. And the last Pokemon that we need, we need a little bit more speed. Um, it'd be nice. We've got 40 points left. We need a little bit more speed. There wasn't too much around here. And honestly, I do think I'll end up making some free agent transactions. But the last Pokemon that we ended up grabbing is Lipard. Lipard uh, is very fast. Now, after, after Alolan Raichu, it is the second fastest member of our team with 106 base speed. It has access to Prankster, which is really nice. Um, so Prankster Thunder Waves are always going to be a great thing. Um, it also has access to Unburdened. So a lot of times within Grassy Terrain, you'll see people run Unburdened with a Grassy uh, grassy Seed to boost defense. Um, so if that's the case, if that's something we feel like running, we can also do that. It has Limber to avoid Paralysis as well. It's fast. It can provide some coverage moves. Prankster Thunder Wave is always a fun time. Um, not too much to say about Lipard. Like I said, I do anticipate some, uh, some changes to the roster prior to week two. So, but, uh, that, 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 that's going to be the squad. I think we have a formidable, a formidable team on our hands here. I'm looking forward to our week one matchup. I hope you guys are as well. Do me a favor, go drop a subscription to all of the coaches. Link will be in the description of this video. So that way you guys can keep up with some of your favorites. Follow the BBR on Twitter. I run that Twitter probably about a third of the time, so it's pretty much like following me on a second account. If you guys are excited, if you guys have enjoyed this video, leave a like. It goes a long way in supporting the channel. And I know some of you guys are not subscribed, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on our week one battle coming next week. All that being said, I want to remind you guys to be great and do great. I'm going to let this outro bang, and I'll talk to you all soon. Later. Later.